Now, this is just a quick audio test. If you are watching this stream live, please let me know if the audio is OK and then we're ready to go live. And good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. It is Tuesday, the 4th of August, and I'm doing a live tutorial and playthrough of Lunar Base. What you see here is a prototype copy of the game. This game has gone live on Kickstarter a few hours ago, and this is a sponsored tutorial and playthrough uh, from the publisher to get me to cover the game. Now, I've played this game a couple of times yesterday to learn how to play the game. And yeah, today what we're going to be doing is me and a friend of mine we're going to be teaching you how to play the game whilst playing through it. Now, if that first game takes half an hour or less, we're actually going to do two games because I kind of booked out an hour for this game. We enjoyed the game yesterday. So, yeah, if the first game is relatively short, we're going to be doing a second one. Um, yeah, thank you very much for everybody for joining me live. And I'm now going to say hello to my friend Ian. Good afternoon, Ian. Hello, Paul. Now, you are joining us all the way from Sunny. Whereabouts are you at the moment? Uh, I am just outside Newbury in Berkshire. Uh, and is it sunny? It is actually. Oh, oh there we go then. <laughs> so yes, now we, we both played this yesterday. Um, me and Ian played this yesterday. Um, we basically did a Skype call where we got the game out of the box and we learned how to play from the rulebook and then we played a couple of games. Um, and it went quite well, didn't it? I think you won one. Did you win both? I can't remember now. No, I, I won one and you won one. That was it, yeah. So this is this is the rematch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, and thank you very much, Oliver. They can hear you as well. Yeah, because I've had a few audio issues yesterday where people couldn't hear the other person. Right, okay. So Lunar Base is a game about colonising the moon. It's base building on the moon. It's for two to six players. Um, and yeah, we're going to be showing you the two-player game today. Now, the objective of the game uh, is one of four different things. So there, the game comes with these little... Uh, dials. Again, this is a prototype type copy of the game. This tracks how many credits that you have. Because this is quite hard to see on camera, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be using gaming rule dice uh, to represent how many credits you've got. So we're going to be using these instead. But here are the four ways that you can win. So if you get to 20 credits, you win immediately. If you get 10 colonists in total, you win. If you get five different scientific achievements, you win. And if you're playing with the influence cards that we're going to today, having four influence cards in your hand, you also win. That's the four ways to win. Now, because we are live streaming this, there is certain things which are going to be visible, which wouldn't normally be visible in the game. So what would normally happen is the cards that you will have in your hand, these will be kept secret from the other players. Again, because it's a live stream, we're going to be showing each other what cards we've got. But I'm going to try and not look at Ian's cards and he's going to try and not look at mine, if we can. Now, to start the game, everybody starts with one of these Terran outposts. OK, there are six uh, stations in the card. Um, and this side, they are all the same. Everybody starts with exactly the same. But it's what's on the other side that gives you a special ability uh, and some extra icons that will help you win the game. These are selected secretly at the start of the game, so you will know which base, uh, which, which station you've got. Um, other people won't know. And when you get the ability to flip that over, it can be a bit of a surprise. So I'm going to give these a shuffle. And then what we're going to do to start off today is, Ian, I'm going to deal with one of you at random. And then I'm, not, I'm going to close my eyes. I mean, I could just take my glasses off because then I can't see it. But no, I'm going to close my eyes. That is yours. Let me know when you've got it. Uh, let me just check my... Ian's got a list of them at his house. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You got it? Right, okay. Got it. So yeah. that's yours. And then, if you want to close your eyes, Ian, yeah, I'm going to show everybody what I've got. I've got this one. Okay, so the things that are relevant to me are these here, these down here, and this bit here. Okay, right, so that's mine. The other stations do not get used. And now I'm going to zoom out because we're going to need 
a bit more space. Right, I can get rid of the box, we don't need that. The rest of the cards get shuffled. Now, in here there are three types of cards. Let's just zoom in again a little bit. I'll show you the three types of cards. Um, come on, there you go. Right, so we have these, these are modules. Um, I don't know the significance of the different coloured backgrounds on these two, but these are modules because they say module. Um, there are also agent cards, which are these white ones that say agent. And there are these influence cards. Now it does say in the rule book for your first game, do not play with the influence cards. And we didn't yesterday. We played our first game without them. And then we played our second game with them. And we've decided to do today's stream using them because they're quite interesting and they don't add that much extra complexity. So yeah, we're going to be playing with those. All of these get shuffled. And then this will become the deck of cards, which I'm actually going to have slightly off camera. Oh, Adam is saying I said a bit more space. Yes, that was a that was a non-deliberate pun there. <laughs> I'm zooming out so that there is a bit more space. There we go. Right, okay. So this is this is my station. This is your station. We can zoom in a little bit more, can't we, to start with? Okay. And then we both get three cards in hand. So uh, is it three cards in hand? Yeah, three cards in hand. Yes, I think it was. Right, okay. So the three cards I start with are these three. And the three cards Ian starts with are these three. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look at mine. There we go. I'm gonna splay them out so we can see what I've got. And then I'm gonna show Ian his without really looking at them much. Now can you see what you've got in? Uh my hand, I can yeah. hand off at the moment. You can zoom in a bit if you want me to. Ah, now I can. It's um, my, my internet just refreshed. Oh, right, okay. Thankfully. So there, there's your cards and I'm looking at my cards. And then in addition to that, there is the supply. So we're going to put the supply in the middle of the board. The supply is three cards plus an extra card per player. So in a two-player game, that's five cards. Now, this is interesting because straight away, we have one of these influence cards. Um, now, you may notice there's a little bit of glare. I have tried to sort out the lighting in here, but these cards are very, very shiny. So they are reflecting some of my studio lighting a bit. So this influence card, we might as well explain how that works right now, because these influence cards, they have an effect on the game whilst they are in the supply. Okay, and you win if you, if you take four of them into your hand. But while they are in the supply, they have a permanent effect on the game. And this one is that there is a Terran embargo. So what normally happens when the shuttle arrives, both players will get income, but because of the Terran embargo, nobody gets income when the shuttle arrives. We'll come on to that in a little bit more detail later on. Right, um, so we've got two agents in the supply, two modules in the supply. We've got our card. It's time to decide who's going to go first. So evens, I'll go first. That's a six. So that's evens. So I'm going to go first. Right. So on your turn, we basically take it in turns. And if we were playing with more than two of us, we'd go around the table. And on your turn, you first of all, you can play agent cards. Now you can play, is it, is it one or more agent cards? I think you can play as many as you want. Um, but the agent cards are these ones, which say agent on. But, oh, and we both start with three credits. Let's not forget that, yeah. Um, to play the agent cards, you notice in the top left, let's just zoom in a little bit more. Right, so the top, uh, sorry, the top right of these cards, there are these coloured orbs. That indicates the cost in credits to play the card. Now, the colours are important because you can get discounts depending on the colours. At the moment, neither of us have any discounts. So playing this double agent will cost me two credits. Playing Kim, the mech pilot, will cost me five credits. I, I'm going to choose right now not to play either of those agents because I want these credits. They are precious. Um... So what happens now is that I'm not going to play an agent, so now I go into my main action phase, I get to do one main action. And I'm just going to zoom in again because you can see the main action that I can do, it's printed here. I have a choice of either drafting, which is to take one card from the supply, building, which allows me to build a module from my hand onto the board, or do the third action. And the third action is actually two things, it's resell and draw. So based on what I've got in hand, I think... I am going to choose to, I'd really like to play this, but this costs four credits and I don't get any discount. So, yeah, 
let me just have I'm just going to remind myself what's on the other side of my card. Oh yeah. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to draft a card. So now I'm going to take the rover. Okay, so I just take that, put it in my hand, and that is it. That, that is my go done. Very simple. Ian, your go. Okay. Um, hmm. These, uh, these cards are very different to the ones we started with last time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a big deck of cards here, and there's a lot of different ones in there, so... Yeah, well, there's there's no obvious money cards, which is what no. we started with last time. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna draft the uh, the influence card. Okay, so that influence card has been drafted. That goes into Ian's hand. So I know that he now has one influence card in hand. Of course, I shouldn't know what are the other three cards in hand. He's got. For all I know, he's already got an influence card in hand, and he's possibly going for that victory. Right, back to me. I am going to choose the. Um, I'm going to choose the resell action. Uh, sorry, this third action that I have here. So it's resell times two and then draw. So with resell, basically what I do is it's resell times two. So I can choose two cards here in the supply and I get rid of them and I get a credit for each one that I resell. So I'm going to get rid of the J Webb telescope and also the hacker pirate. So they're gone. They go to the discard pile, which is off camera, and I get two credits. And then I get to draw a card. So Ian shouldn't see what this is. That is the card that I have drawn. Okay, now you're probably thinking what happens when the supply runs out, and we might see that now, because something does happen when the supply runs out. You're going in. Yes. Hmm. And there's comments in the chat about the look of the card, both from an artwork point of view and a graphic design point of view. And yes, it is very clear um, yeah, it's, it's very functional whilst also looking pretty, which is a, a fine balance to get sometimes in games. Yeah, the only thing I, I, would, I would say is the, um, with the costs in the top right, mm -hmm. I kind of, I would have, if, if it, this is, this is more of a personal thing, personally I would have done kind of just three different orbs and then just put a number in, inside, so you know, right. like, it's like, X number of red, X number of yellow, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, uh, I think I, yeah, I'll draft the I'll draft the card in the middle. Okay, so you're going to draft the card in the middle. There you yeah. go. That card has been drafted. So now what happens at the end of Ian's turn because the supply is empty, we refill the supply. But before we do that, all players get income. Now at the moment, neither of us get any income because in order to get income, you need you need to have completed yellow orbs. That would be a yellow orb. If I'd have had that, I would now get one income. So what Dean's done is he's triggered the income part. Neither of us actually have any money at the moment. Okay, so now we refill. Ooh, that's expensive. We have a smart spaceship. We have a bacon printer. I love the bacon printer. <laughs> we have your favourite card, Ian, the space elevator. Yep. Your other yep, favourite I... card, the Leica Memorial. Oh, we've got another influence card. Right. So, influence card. Um, when you discard this influence, right, there's something on there. This is new. I've not seen that one before. What does that do? I'm just looking in the rule book for that icon. What's, which what's is, the name of the card, Paul? Uh, Entropic Cascade. So it's discard a card. So when you discard this influence, it says discard a card. So choose and put one card from your hand into the discard pile. And then draw four cards and discard three cards immediately. Hmm, okay. So, yeah. Now, is that you discarding a card or your opponent discarding a card? I think it's you. Yeah, I think you discard a card and then you draw four cards and discard three immediately. Now, there is another, and there is another use for these influence cards as well is that sometimes in the game there can be effects which target other players. And if you have one of these influence cards in your hand, you can discard it to ignore the effects of an agent to you or your base. So these agents, you may have noticed some of these cards, 
um, are basically steal things from other players or do things to other players. If you have one of these influence cards in hand, you can discard it to ignore that effect. And the Entropic Cascade is whenever you do discard this influence to protect you, then something happens. You get that ability that's on there. Okay, so that is an effect which isn't actually affecting the game while it's there, like the trade embargo did, but it's something that will give you an ability. Right, and then it's my go. So I am going to choose to... Now, the income's already been triggered. Hmm. Well, I really want that. So yeah, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to build the fusion reactor. So yeah, I'm going to choose the build action. I don't have any discount, so I'm spending four credits. So I go down to one and I'm going to build the fusion reactor. Now, here's the rules about placing cards into your base. You're basically trying to connect similar colored or uh, half orbs together to create full orbs, but the greys count as wild cards. So this is a legal placement. I am allowed to put that there. And this actually now counts as a red orb. Um, what I'm not allowed to do is I'm not allowed to put that there because that would be connecting blue to yellow. So that's not allowed. You can also do things like this. That would be, that would be allowed as well. Or I could do this if I wanted to, because that's allowed. Or this, you know, you've got lots of options within it. Um, I'm actually looking at my other cards that I'm going to be playing soon-ish, he says. And I'm actually going to build it there. So that's where I'm building the fusion reactor. Okay, now I didn't have any discount, so it cost me four credits. But now that I've got one red orb, if I was to play this card, for example, which normally costs one, I actually get a discount of one because of that red orb there. So that's how the discounts work and that's how you, um, yeah, that's how you build. Now also notice this fusion reactor has a main action printed on it. So you only get to do one main action each turn, but I now have four different options. I have the three options from my Terran Outpost and I also have this option, which is to build then draw and then discard. Okay, so yeah, lots of options that I now have available to me. Right, okay. I think that's me done. Yes, it is. I've got one credit left. Your go. Yes. <clears throat> hmm. Uh, the Lunar Base people are in the chat. Thank you very much for joining in. So if anybody's got any questions about the game, uh, yeah, just pop them in the Pop them in the YouTube chat and Lunar Base will be here and able to help you out. As I did go live on Kickstarter, um, yeah, a few hours ago, I think, 10, 10 o'clock this morning, UK time, it went live. Yeah, I'll, I'll draft the, uh, the influence card, I think. You're taking the influence card, right. So I know yep. you now have two influence cards. Okay, so back to me. And I did want to play that, but I've messed it up, haven't I? Yeah. I need more money. Um, how do I get more money? That's the question. Build, draw, discard. I can do that. Yeah, I think I can do that. So I'm going to activate. Uh, am I going to play an agent first? No, I'm not. So I'm going to activate the ability, the main action of my fusion reactor, uh, which is to build. So I'm going to build the rover, which is free because it's one red with a discount of one. That's going to go there, like that. The ability of the rover is on playing this card, an opponent resells a card. So you get to resell a card and you will get one credit for doing that. Ah. Okay. Yes. Um, I will resell the... Go for the smart spaceship. Okay, smart spaceship has been resold. There you go. Um, then I get to draw. So I've got a depot. And then I have to discard. So I'm going to discard. I'm going to discard this double agent. Right, now, before we carry on, let's just have a look at my area here. And let's just remind us of the victory conditions that we have in the game. One of the ways you can win the game is by getting 20 credits. Another way you can win is by getting 10 colonists. And you see here, I have currently one colonist. 
Okay, so I've got one. The other way you can win is by having five different scientific achievements. The scientific achievements are these red icons. So there's one and there is another one. So I currently have two different scientific achievements. And that's something that you want to keep an eye on. You want to watch what the other people are collecting, um, you know, to keep an eye on, on who you think is winning the game. But remember, everybody's station on the other side has certain abilities on it. So you can't just look at the cards that are available. You've got to be aware that they may be able to, to flip their station over. Right. Um, so that was me. I built, I drew, I discarded. I'm done. You'll go. Okay, uh, I'm going to build the rover. Okay, so this costs one. Yeah. Putting you down to three credits. Where would you like to put it? I'll place it such that the uh, the yellow uh, the yellow icon on the bottom matches up with the grey on the on the right of the station. There. That one. Yep. Okay. Right. Um, and nice on playing this card, an opponent resells a card. So I am going to resell. Oh, I want all of them. Yeah, they're all really nice cards. <laughs> and that space elevator is kind of out of reach of both of us at the moment. Oh, yes. I'm going to re I'm going to resell the Lycan Memorial. So that's gone. I got two credits. Okay. Are you done? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right. My go. So now that I've got two credits, oh, that, that changes everything. Yeah, I am going to spend those two credits to build the asteroid grinder. So it costs two. I don't get any discount because I haven't got any yellow orbs, but that is going right in there. Check that out. So I now have three yellow orbs. Cool. Now, just before we move on, I just wanted to mention the grey orbs I mentioned are a wild card. You can connect any colour to them. If you manage to connect two grey orbs together, that's really cool because what that does is that that is a full grey orb and that counts as now a wild card, whatever you want it to be, whenever you want it to be. So you can get a discount. It basically gives you one permanent discount on whatever you want. Right. Um, what was I doing? I was... Oh, I should have chosen a main action. It was probably... You just you just did the build, Paul. Yeah. I just... W wouldn't I have done that one instead? No, no, that's fine, because I want... No, no, I would have done that. I would have used the fusion reactor. So that's my build. Then I'm going to draw. And then I'm going to discard, because I don't want that one. Okay. You'll go. Uh, I'm going to draft the bacon printer. Okay. The bacon printer is yours. And then I think it's time to trigger some income. Yes. So I'm going to take the space elevator. So I'm going to draft that. And then at the end of my turn, the shuttle arrives. Now I get three credits. And Ian, you get one credit. Yep. And now we get five new cards. So we have the J Web Telescope, uh, the Burrowang Engineers, another rover. Uh, another Barrowang Engineers, and a Solicitor. <laughs> now, that is interesting because the Solicitor allows you to flip a station. Right, you'll go. Ah. Uh, yes. That is interesting. I think I'm going to I'm going to build the bacon printer though. Okay, so the bacon printer costs three red. You don't get any discount on that, so it goes down to one. And where is it going? I'm going to place it on top of the rover. Uh, if you and if you rotate it 90 degrees, so the two reds match up with the two reds. Like that. Yep, yeah, like that. Okay. And on playing this card, you draw a card and then discard a card. So the card you have drawn is an inflatable habitat. Which card would you like to discard? Yes. Uh, can you just zoom in on my card? A minute? I can. There we go. There are your cards. Uh, 
Um, I th think I'll get rid of the um, the Panama uh, investor. Panama broker, yeah. The broker, sorry, yeah. Okay, that has gone. And is that your go done? I think it is. Yep, yeah, that's my go done. Right, so I think now that doesn't quite work those don't kind of those don't quite match up but this space elevator is really nice because it's it's all gray um and i can afford it i think i've got two red i've got two yellow i don't have the two blue but i am going to spend yeah i am going to spend two money and i'm going to build a space elevator so i'm going to use which action do i want to use i'm just using my normal build action and i'm going to put the space elevator there so that connects these orbs and that gives me another main action and it also gives me an extra two population and a third different science symbol scientific achievement okay right over to you yeah i'm going to build the inflatable habitat okay. and put it uh where the two blues match up on the on the station yeah so that is free Smells like a new car, is the flavour text. That gives you <laughs> two population and two blue orbs. Okay, so... I am going to build the Hayashi Dome, which costs a red, a blue and a yellow, but I have all the discounts you can possibly imagine. Um, and I'm going to build that dome. Ooh. Choices, choices. I think I'm going to put it. No, I can't put it there because yeah, you know, I'm going to put it up there. Might need to slide down a bit. Yeah, I'm going to put it up there. So on playing this card, uh, an opponent resells two cards. So you do get two two resells for that. Ah, okay. What would you like to resell? Um, well, we'll get one of the, rid of one of the Burrowang engineers. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll also resell Solicitor as well. Okay. So you get two car, two credits for that. Okay. And then it's your go. It is. So I'm now up to three money. Yeah. We haven't seen any agents being played in this game, which is unusual. We haven't, no. Um, so that does that, but also... Okay. Oh, looks like the Skype connection's dropped. Hopefully Ian will be back. Easy back, easy back. I'm not sure if he's back. So bear with us a minute. I will. Uh, I will try and get Ian back. Let's hang up the call, and let's call him again. We have other ways of calling him if this doesn't work. Is he back? Oh. You're back. <laughs> you dropped off there for a minute. Well, it sounds like he's back. But he's not back. Right. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Yes, can you hear me? Right. Okay. Unusual. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to backup method. Uh, so if you can if you can hear me, Ian, I am going to send you. Uh, I'm going to start chatting with you on Messenger um, instead. Can you hear me, Ian? 
Um, can you hear me now, Paul? I, I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Right. OK. I can hear Ian. Ian can't hear me. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call him on Messenger uh, and this will confuse him because if he can't hear me. Right. Let's drop that and bear with us. We will get him back. We will get him back. Uh, it's just if I can work out. And to call him on this, which is there. Right. We have methods. We have ways of doing this. Playing remotely always brings more challenges. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, Ian. Can you hear me? I can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. OK, right. OK. So, yeah, I'm not sure what went on with Skype, but I could hear you, but you couldn't hear me. So. Uh, yeah, it seemed to lose connection on my side, which yeah. is just uh, unusual. Really wanted. Yeah. OK, so I'm now going to turn on my video and I'm going to share my screen with you over Messenger. If it works. There we go. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're back on, and I think it was your go. Yeah. Yes, the carrier pigeons were on standby. Yes, <laughs> we're all good. Now I don't know what the quality of the screen share is over Messenger. Is it clear? Uh, yeah, it's 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 okay. Okay. It's okay. Cool. Um. Right. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's just uh, uh, reset slightly. Uh, right. So I've got three money. I've got. Um, I'll I'll draft the telescope. Let's make it. Okay. Um, so you're taking the J okay. Web telescope. Right. Yep, okay. Please. You'll like this. Not a lot, but I am now going to choose the space elevators main action which is to draft two cards. So I take that one and that one, and then what that does is it will trigger a shuttle visit. Now at this point, I have one, two, three, four, five. I've got five yellow orbs, so I gain five money. Uh, you've got one yellow orb, so you gain one money. Yep. And then we get five new cards. So we have another space elevator. We have a space unicorn. Every game needs a space unicorn. We have market manipulator. We have theocracy as another influence card. And we have an underground headquarters. OK, so theocracy. Um, so this is a permanent effect. Whenever any player drafts an influence card, including this one, then uh, that looks like the draft a card symbol. Yeah, then you draft a card and that player discards two cards immediately. OK, so whenever any player drafts an influence, they get to draft another card, but then must discard two cards immediately. OK, interesting. OK, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Right. OK. Because uh, uh, it's my, yeah. my turn, isn't it? I, I'll draft that influence. OK, so that gives you three influence. So you, ha you now draft another card and then you must discard yeah. two cards. Yep, yeah, I'll draft the um, underground headquarters. Yeah. Uh, and then I will discard my two agents. Okay. Right, so Ian is getting dangerously close to winning. I know that he's picked up those three cards because that's happened during the game. Um, now, I'm actually quite close to winning as well because I've got one, two, three, four, five, five population. It's not the population though. I have four different science icons. And if I just had, if this was another one, oh, yeah, close, right. So I think, hmm, let me just check the other side of my card again. Okay, yeah. I think I am going to play the Berrowang Engineers. So it normally costs four blue and a yellow. I have a discount of yellow and two blue. 
So it costs me two blue, so I go down from six down to four. Um, and I play this card, and this is going to go... Where is it going to go? I, mean, I can put it... You can't do that either. You can't have half orbs against the flat side. So I think this is going to go there. Is that still on camera? Not quite, but yeah, I'm going to go there. Oh no, I can't go there. That's not legal. Um, let me go there. Okay, so I'll put that there. Now, on playing this card, flip a station and build a module. So I'm going to flip my station. So I flip the station over. I am Tycho Tech. And the special ability of Tycho Tech is it gives me two extra yellow orbs. But most importantly, it gives me two population. The Barrowing Engineers also had two population. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I thought I had ten. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, rats. And then I can build a module. Now, the building a module is optional. Oh, I should have played my agent first. Can I just undo that? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that hasn't happened yet. Okay. First of all, before I do my action, I'm going to play Kim, the tech pilot. So this is an agent. You play your agents before your main action. It costs five, but I get a discount of three. So it costs me two. The ability is draw two cards and then build a module. And now I build. So with, with the, I've not done my action yet. I'm building a module with that, uh, which is this, which costs me the two that we worked out earlier, um, which allows me to flip the station. Okay, and that allows me to build a module. And this time, I think, yes, I've got the smart spaceship, which I can just about afford because it costs five red. I have a discount of three red, so it costs me all of my money. Uh, and this can go wherever, really. I can put it there. But the smart spaceship has a scientific achievement on it. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I have five different scientific achievements. And that is it. Nice one. Whew, yeah. <laughs> that was interesting because I used this agent just to give me the extra card draw in the hope that I would draw something either with population. One more population would have done it. But then I spotted the scientific achievement card. So there you go. Yeah, you, you, you were at least a couple of rounds ahead of me because I needed yeah. to, to clear out that supply and hope another influence card turned up. Yeah, got a good start on that one. Right, do you want to go again? Do you want another game? Yeah, no, definitely. Let's go for it. Right. If you have any questions about the game, uh, please let me know in the chat. Or, um, or as I say, Lu Luna Base are actually in the chat as well. You can ask them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take out these two. So this, you were uh, Imbrium. Ooh, interesting one. Right. We're going to get rid of those. So we're not going to be those again. But what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle all these cards together. And let's get those influence cards and spread them out a bit. Okay, so... Right, okay, so these are the four remaining Terran Oak posts. This one's yours, Ian. And this one's mine. I will zoom in on that one. And I'm going to flip it over and close my eyes. Let me know when you've got it. Okay, yep. Got it? Okay. Yep. So that's that flip back. And if you close your eyes, let's have a look at mine. Eyes closed. Okay, that's the one I've got. Right. Okay, off we go then. So three credits each. Give these a shuffle. And you go first for this game. Yes, because you won the last game. Because I won the last one, so you go first in this one. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so my cards are that. Go 
Josh, not that I know what cards you've got in your hand, but... <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Right. You'll go first. Okay. Well, I'm going to draft that asteroid grinder. Mm -hmm. It's always a good card to start with, isn't it? Because it gets your income up. It is. Nice and early. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to draft... I'll draft the inflatable habitat. Okay, you'll go. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend two and build the, the uh, Astro Grinder. Yep, and I'm going to put it there, which is the obvious yep. place for it. Okay. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to draft the other inflatable habitat. Back to you. Okay. And I'll draft the, the dome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm now going to build this inflatable habitat and I'm actually going to put it there because that gives me a grey orb, which is a permanent discount of one. I can basically say that that's whatever colour I want it to be whenever I want it to be a colour. So, yeah, that's quite cool. Right. Yeah, that is. Um... And Oliver is asking how much player interaction is there in the game. So there are stealing of cards and there is stealing of credits. We didn't see any of it in the game earlier today, but we did see it in our test games yesterday. There were a couple of uh, there were a couple of times where did I steal a module off you, Ian, at one point? I think um, I did. You certainly considered it. Yeah. <laughs> Whether I did or not, I don't know. And there are a few cards that allow you to steal credits from other players as well. Yes, I think some of the actual um, uh, stations specialise in kind of stealing credits from other yeah. sides. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, quick rules query, because I don't think it came up yesterday. Mm -hmm. But the So the third main action we have on our basic station is yeah. that uh, we resell two cards and then draw a card. Mm, um, there's, there's only, only one card there to resell. In yes. which case, you only resell once. But I can still do the full action. I think you can still do the full action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'll do. So I'll okay. resell. So you that resell agent. that to get a credit, and then you draw, and you get one of those cards. Ah. Right. My go. I am going uh, to. Oh no no, no shuttle class. Oh, yeah. You need to. Yeah. So you get two income, and I get one income. And then we refill the supply. Oh, we got another one. These influence cards are coming thick and fast in this game. Right, so this is another Which, one. Oh, right, is that this a turn embargo or not? It's the Entropic Cascade again. Ah, okay. So it's another one that doesn't affect the game when it's in play. It just gives you an ability when you discard it. Right. Okay. Hmm. Lots of blue. Which is no good. I mean, that grinder is nice. Is that going to fit with anything else that I've got? Possibly, possibly not. Uh, just don't want you to have that. Okay, I'm going to take the Struve Dome. There you go. Has been drafted. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the Satellite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm now going to play... Icons don't match. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to play the uh, experimental borehole. It's going to go there. And on playing this card, I draw two cards. Okay, your go. Um, I can I just have a? Uh, can you just zoom in on on my hand? It's just okay. off the right hand side of the screen. Just want to have a look at the. Yes. Okay. See them so, okay? Yeah, I want to draft. Yeah, uh, but I, I just wanted to check what was on the satellite card uh, okay. in terms of the connections. I'm going to draft the uh, the astro grinder. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to draft the entropic cascade. Okay, uh, I am going to build the asteroid grinder on top of the other asteroid grinder. <laughs> Up there? Um, no, so uh, rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Yeah, that way there. Yeah. Okay, so that costs you two yellow, but you've got a discount of two yellow. So that's free. And on playing this card, an opponent resells two cards. Well, there's only one. So I resell that. Did we do that last time you played the uh, asteroid grinder? I can't remember. I don't know if we did. No, we may have missed that. Sorry if we did. Right, five new cards in there and income. You get three, I get one. So I'm up to six and you're up to seven. Okay, right. Well, I think I'm going to try and go for it. It's a little risky. But let's try it. I'm going to play another experimental borehole and this time it's going to go there, which again is free and I get to draw two cards. Now, if I get an influence card, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there are only eight influence cards in the game. Uh, yeah, we were lucky there because they did come out early. Now, as I say, because we were playing open hands, Ian didn't know that I had a hand of influence cards, but you saw that I took one from here, but what you didn't realise is that I already had two in hand. So, yeah, there you go. So yeah, that, that's a couple of quick games of it. Now, it does play two to six players. Uh, I am very keen to play this game with, with more players. Um, I'm speaking to the designers, uh, the publishers at the moment, about possibly creating a mod for Tabletop Simulator. Because yeah, I really fancy playing this um with more, more more than two players we said yesterday Ian, didn't we that we both really like to play it with more players yeah i very much i there's i think there'd be different strategies that would um because at, at two players the you know the the science getting the science symbols or in this case getting the influence yeah seem to be quite strong strategies mm -hmm. um there's one card that i've got in in my hand the, the crazy president that we yeah. didn't actually see <laughs> yeah, you didn't see this. So this, this is a really interesting one, especially with multiple players, is because what it does is when you play this card, all players flip their station. Now, you flipping your station is a good thing so that you get the special ability on the other side, but anybody else who has flipped their stations already suddenly have to flip them back. So this, this card is interesting uh, and the timing of when you play it is also interesting. And there are there are many other abilities as well that you didn't see. Uh, like the Rebel Captain allows you to either flip your station or if you discard a card, you flip two stations. Now in a two player game, that would be, well, I'll discard a card. I'll flip my station to the good side and I'll flip yours back from the good side back to the bad, bad side. So yeah, I think definitely, um, definitely there would be a lot more interesting player interaction with multiple players. And your turns in this game are relatively short. So although the playtime would increase with more players, I mean, we played that game there in less than 10 minutes, I think. So, yeah, it yeah. would be, you know, a six-player game of this, would you'd probably play it in under an hour, I would have thought. I'd, I'd like to think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, watch this space for news on a tabletop simulator mod. As I say, I'm talking with the publisher literally right now <laughs> about getting that done. Um, and yeah, I hope you found this video useful. So this was created to uh, to help promote the Kickstarter campaign. The Kickstarter is live now. It went live this morning. There is a link to the Kickstarter in the show notes below. Um, and yeah, I mean, the most important thing for me is that I help you, give you the information so that you can decide whether it's the kind of game that you like based on what you've seen. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. Thank you, Ian, for joining me. 
Thank you very much for having me, Paul. Yep, and thank you very much to the publisher for asking me to make this video. I will be back later on in the week with some more live playthroughs. So take care and thanks very much for watching. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com